The creator of Chainsaw Man, Tatsuki Fujimoto, is so talented, and that's why audiences are losing it over the movie Look Back, which is based on his short story, and I have it. This was my first Amazon wishlist gift, and it means a lot to me, especially since it came with a now very faded note thanking me for making Chainsaw Man videos. And the way that this kind of slips out of the book because I keep it there, um, really connects to the story of Look Back. So of course, spoilers for Look Back. It's a fantastic story if you haven't already read it, but here's what I think is so special about this story. Not only have most of us had some kind of history with creating art and trying to connect with people through that art, but we also know what it's like to feel like we aren't good enough, to compare ourselves to other people and let that stop us in our tracks. But as they say, comparison is the thief of joy. And so we see our two characters, Koyomoto and Fujino, coming together and creating something beautiful instead of letting jealousy stop one of them from creating in the first place. So why do you draw? Why create? It's to connect with other people. And that's what we see in the very end. We're going over this question since making manga isn't the easiest thing in the world. Sometimes it doesn't feel good. But Fujino thinks about the time that she spent with Koyomoto, and that's what added so much to the value of creating art. But there's not just a love for the technical aspect of creation. Even in the story, we see that Fujino is studying so hard, but her art just isn't progressing as much as she wanted to. But when she starts connecting with Koyomoto, and the two of them start going out in the world together, their art, their ability to create stories, flourishes. It becomes so much better because of real world experiences. There's the fantastical aspect of it as well. Is Koyomoto actually able to connect with Fujino during this whole exchange of the little comic book slips? Do they really see each other's stories passing under that door? Well, it could be. It could be true or not. But I think another thing Fujimoto loves to explore is how fantasy, how art can help us move forward, how it can help us grieve. After losing Koyomoto, Fujino puts her serialized work, Shark Kick, on hiatus because of her own emotional state. But after visiting Koyomoto's home and seeing how she had collected stacks of shark kick, she knew that she needed to get back to work. Because that work, that art, that experience that they shared together as they built up their artistic skills was what connected them. That story was the culmination of everything they experienced together and that connection that would allow her to keep moving forward. There's even this great visual parallel that shows how Koyamoto is continuously pushing Fujino forward. Remember, back when Fujino had decided that she was going to quit being an artist and she met Koyamoto for the first time and she cheered her on and told her how great she was, we see her rushing home and she's covered in rain and she's drawing and the water from her hair is dripping down on the pages and it doesn't matter. Now at the end of the story, we see that she has crying. Her water from her face is dripping down on Shark Kick as she's contemplating getting back to work. Fujino no longer regrets going to Koyomoto and getting her to leave her room. She knows that that allowed them both to have experiences that they wouldn't have had if she had never left her room. And that was worth it. So in the end, Fujino no longer has to look back in anger.